Um, I did a fashion show in November. And it was funny because I was I was told by my stylist that I needed to stall. So I talked a really long time before the fashion show. And I thought I would tell people about what I pictured when I was designing. And what I, what I picture is, um, like when I was a little kid, I used to get picked on for being fat just all the time. It was nonstop. And I wouldn't picture, you know, myself as thin. I would picture myself as fat, but like a fat like superhero or like um, like a warrior person. And then like I ha I would always have these like really sort of graphic visual ideas about how I would torture the person that was making fun of me. But so when I design, I see these like superheroes and these like powerful people who embody their true spirit and like. So when I'm making a garment, I, I think about that garment embodying their true spirit. So, you know, I, I, it's not like I just take people's measurements and I'm like, okay, what color do you like? What fabric do you like? I'm going to make this for you. It's sort of like, who do you want to be when you're going to wear this dress? You know, who, who, who are you going to represent? You know, what part of you do you want this to represent? And so I think that's something that's a little bit different that I do is that I really just like to talk to people and understand, um, just how they want to feel when they're wearing the garment that I make them. And so that's a big part of my process. But I put on about probably around 50, 55 pounds over the course of like three years and I just was feeling really not good in my body. I always loved clothes and I'd always love ex expressing myself through clothes but I was having a really hard time and that was you know such a huge part of my life and here I wasn't really able to do it. And, you know, I got introduced to Rachel. I just started playing around with clothes with her and then she asked me to model. And even to this day, you know, I've had a weird and like challenging year, but when Rachel calls me up and says, I have some clothes I want you to do a photo shoot, like, I feel so good about myself. I haven't even been like reluctant to like diet or workout because I don't want to not be able to model for her anymore. Somehow something so superficial about your body becomes a statement as a feminist, as a person of color, um, that's core to who I am now. And so now fat is part of my identity, just queer, black, Puerto Rican, Latina, whatever, and fat is now part of that identity in a way that is bold. You know, it's the F word. And I think that telling other people about that um, has also changed dialogues around size with other people. So it's pretty amazing. Constantly being able to purchase clothes from her is a plus. I've got I've got some of her store's taggings on right now which have just blown up in popularity because they're encouraging women to think more about color with their wardrobe. And ever since I've started modeling for her, I've thought about my outfits differently every morning when I put them on. And I'm not afraid to wear certain pieces in bold colors like I may have been before. Right, that's sort of the irony is that these supermodels are are not at all the norm. Um, people that Rachel dresses are the norm, and yet clothing is designed to look good on this very, very small percentage of the population. It doesn't really make a lot of sense when you think about it. <laughs> a lot of the things I make have like a very vintage feel to them because I started working with vintage clothing, and so I feel like you know this coat looks very vintage. Um, this coat is modeled after a 20s coat that my great great aunt had that I really, I remember seeing it, she had it in brown velvet um, and she wore it until she died and I remember seeing it when I was a kid and just loving this giant bow in the middle and I would put it on and just like love like feeling the bow and you know, a lot of other designers wouldn't put a big giant bow in the middle of a fat girl's stomach, but I would. It's called the million layer skirt. And so, um, basically, I really like to make like big weird skirts 
because they always plus size designers make like these very form-fitting skirts that are supposed to like suck in your fat and I'm against that idea and so like this is another one I made out of wool that's just like big huge ruffles and makes somebody look like a big sort of like puffy cupcake so, like Rachel's a counselor at heart so what she does is she counsels people on how they feel about themselves and then she dresses them it's not like this goes with your figure this is your season these go with your issues about yourself. Feel comfortable. Like, as a woman who feels very uncomfortable about the size of her breasts and how she has to dress at work to look casual, I would wear, like, extra feminine clothes. And she's like, don't do that. Wear a sweater vest to work. Nobody's going to look at you differently. Because she taught me about the politics of fat fashion, and even the word fat being a political thing uh, was something that I learned from her. So. I would say that she changed the way I thought about my own body and how being um, a person of color is political, but also being a woman of size, being a fat woman is political, and looking good is political. I think that fat people aren't allowed to look good, and so when you do, um, people are shocked, and in a way you're kind of being confrontational. And her clothes are kind of confrontational in design, but also it gives you this confidence to be present in a room. The short shorts and that crop tops are not gonna work for us. But I mean, we deserve to have clothes that show our personality and show our, our body. And you know, a lot, of, a lot of stuff doesn't do that. I was just talking to Rachel about how they'll take like skinny girl clothes and try and uh, make them bigger in certain point, like parts to try and say, hey, well, we made this for you. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Like you really have to know what we want to wear. And you know, we don't want to wear tents <laughs> or like moo-moos or house dresses, <laughs> so. She, she has an amazing way of seeing someone and um, immediately can sort of cultivate an understanding of what that person is going to look like, what's going to be flattering on them. And so she's put me in some things that I never would have picked out for myself. And then I'm like, wow. This, this looks good and it makes, I feel good in it, but I never would have pulled it off the rack and thought, oh, I should wear this. Um, so I guess that's another one of the ways in which Rachel has changed how I look at clothes and how I, um, how I exhibit my own personal style. I also run Redress NYC. Deb Malkin got me started in design. Like when I, I met her in New York City and when I said that I wanted to design, she actually bought me my first dress form and really encouraged me to do it and said, you know, there's not a lot of plus size designers um, that have original ideas. You know, a lot of plus size clothing is just mass made. It's with the leftover fabric. Um, they don't really think a lot about details or fit. And so she really encouraged me to um, try that. And it was because of her encouragement that I decided to go forward with my design career. And then she opened a store in New York um, that was amazing. And my first runway show was in her store. And then I had two other runway shows, uh, Indie Plus runway shows, that Deb Malkin um, just sponsored and put on so that there would be some equity in plus size fashion because New York Fashion Week doesn't show plus sizes. So she sort of did her own thing and really kind of showed me that you can rebel and still be successful. Um, because if your art is coming from a genuine place, people are going to respect it and they're gonna like it. And then I run two of my own companies. I run Sweet Tooth Couture, which is my um, fashion line that I make. I would say I do two seasonal lines a year at this point. I've been making it since 2009. Um, that really takes a lot of time and money. The first time I came into her house, um, it was I was like loving the decor, and then I came into her studio space with all the clothes, and it was amazing. I had never been in a space with so many awesome clothes for a fat person. And I wasn't even using the word fat at the time, so that, that came much later um, in my politics and my thinking, but um, it was an amazing experience because you had someone acknowledging your size um, and also telling that you were pretty and also giving you really kick-ass clothes to wear. I think a lot of people don't know how expensive it is to produce clothes when you're not just hand sewing them yourself. Um, so I usually have to save up quite a bit of money or have a clean slate on a credit card <laughs> and um, 
then I produce my clothing and just sort of cross my fingers and hope that it all sells. And I've been lucky enough where all of the lines I've made have broken even. Um, I've never made any money off of Sweet Tooth Couture, but um, it's kind of my art baby, so I'm willing to not make any money off of it. And then I also run Cupcake and Cuddle Bunny, which is my vintage clothing line. So that is sort of like a hunter-gatherer. I go out and find really great plus-size vintage, and um, where I live in Cleveland is like the land of fat people vintage clothing. It's just so fruitful. It's fantastic. And so um, I go out and I find stuff and I style it and put it on models and photograph it and sell it. And so um, I do all of that and I go to grad school. And I've noticed that since I've started to wear her designs, I get so many compliments from smaller sized people. Um, straight size, normal size, whatever you want to call them, but you get skinny people, skinny women wanting your clothes, and it feels kind of good. I hate to say when you like, you can't have it. You know, <laughs> you're too small to have my clothes, and so you get women saying, "Can Rachel design something for me, or can she resize it?" And it's like, shut it down, sorry. And so I get to have these one of a kind, amazing pieces that only I can have, partially because I look good in it, partially because I'm over the size 12. Rachel's personality comes out immensely in her designs and I think that makes her clothing line really unique. And she tailors to obviously a more plus size figure and so the clothes are really flattering to all, all of the body types that put them on because that's one thing that she has in mind. Um, you know, you're not gonna see any hideous horizontal stripes on her outfits, you know? <laughs> and if you do, they're gonna be bold and be right in your face and um, whoever's seeing anybody wearing her pieces is gonna know about it. <laughs> I would love if Rachel would design for men, but um, I totally appreciate and support her focus on designing for plus-size women. So she has provided some fashion and wardrobe guidance, some much-needed assistance for me uh, because she's great. But we work together through her nonprofit work. She does a lot of advocacy work for the fashion design community. She tries to provide resources and an infrastructure to help fashion designers flourish here in Cleveland. The women who wear our clothes are her biggest fans because we've, we've experienced her craft and her power. Um, but I, I would like to see Rachel you know, on pages and on websites everywhere um, and being admired, not just for being a fat fashion designer, but just being admired for being a fashion designer. And so I think that the more we can change the dialogue about size so that it's not about you know, being a fat fashion designer, and I don't know how Rachel feels about that, but for me it's like, I just want her to be a fashion designer and not someone who makes clothes for fat women. Um, I think the other thing that Rachel does for, for all women, especially women who wear her clothes, but all women in general, is that she affirms you. She affirms like your soul, your being, your spirit. She does that through clothes. She puts passion into every single piece of clothing she makes. Um, as one of her models at photo shoots, she's very particular, she's demanding, but it's because she's put her heart and soul into these creations and she wants them to look good. She's proof that you can live in Cleveland, Ohio and be known around the world for the fashion design work that you do. She has uh, buyers in Australia, she's been in national news outlets multiple times, and she continues to be very successful. So it's great to just know somebody like that, and I've gone to her for guidance in my own work, not related to fashion, because she's a very smart business person. I think I'm a little bit more fashion savvy just knowing her because she, again, she could walk into a garage and come out with a, an awesome outfit for somebody to wear. Um, so it's, it's great to, to have a friend who is non-judgmental and gives you that, that advice that you need. She took a chance on a kid in camouflage shorts and a white t-shirt and she changed the way I look and she changed my philosophy on life and, and a lot of people's. And I would go with her to her fashion shows and I would watch how humble and gracious she was and how fearless she was about life and she instilled that in me. Um, and she instilled that in my, I, I had no fashion values per se and she taught me to be brave, brave with patterns, brave with my body. Um, and a lot of people have issues with different parts of their body and she knew the issues that I had. And she's like, this is how you can work with this. You want to wear a tie? Wear a tie outside your sweater vest. It'll, it'll cover up the things that you don't feel comfortable about. It'll make you feel more comfortable. Rachel's just fun. Um, 
very carefree, uh, almost childlike, and just being very fun, but just such a supportive human being, and I think one of the nicest and kindest people I've ever met. And that's what's really interesting about Rachel, because she's been so successful, and she has had a lot of achievements and accomplishments. She doesn't let that get to her head. She doesn't have an attitude. She talks to everybody and anybody, and she's the same Rachel now that I knew when I first met her. The older you get, the harder it is to make friends, but I think being friends with Rachel is really easy because she's a giving, generous, compassionate person. The other side of that is that she'll tell you like it is every single time. I've never been <laughs> more insulted at times with Rachel telling me things I don't want to hear and being honest and what we call real, you know, with each other. Um, she is someone who's balanced. Rachel is the mama bird of every friend group she's in. She's the one who is going to make sure that you go home from her party with a plate of leftovers. And she's going to make sure that you have a drink in your hand when you come in her door. But she's also going to be the first one to come rescue you when a boyfriend has made you cry. And the first time that I came to model for her, she was living in a house of beautiful women. And it was all women living in this house. And I think the first thing I saw when I opened the door was all of them sitting down to a dinner that they had all prepared. And so she's just a very loving, friendly, kind soul, an old soul. <laughs> she seems like the kind of person who will really enjoy being um, a fabulous woman in her late in life. <laughs> you know, so I just, I always feel like I need to get stuff done. That's just there. The other thing that keeps me going is that I, all these people that you've talked to, like, they, man, they're, they're why I do it, you know, like, being able to, like, <laughs> make people happy and feel empowered and, like, live their lives to the fullest, what a gift to be able to take part in giving them that, like, I can't imagine anything else that would make me feel better, so that definitely helps.